Good day traders, this is Stefanos on behalf of Tixi and in today's webinar we'll be giving an outlook of the market for the week of the 15th until the 19th of August. Now looking at some of the highlights for next week, in the stocks front we're yet again focusing in the Q2 earnings season in the US. Uh, things are starting to slow down a little bit uh, but we still have three major corporations listed on Tixi's platform who are also reporting their figures. Uh, on the Forex front, it's going to be quite a busy week as well, uh, as we're going to have inflation data from the EU, the UK and Japan, and we're also going to get unemployment figures from the UK. Uh, but lastly, and most probably the most important uh, event with regards to Forex, is going to be the FOMC meeting minutes taking place on Wednesday. Uh, before we get into those, uh, first a disclaimer, as always, please note that all, all of the ideas discussed in the webinar are my own opinions and do not make up for any form of investment, trading advice, neither any recommendations to buy or sell. You should always do your own research and due diligence before buying or selling any securities, financial products or instruments, and whether you use any kind of trading strategies. And information that relates to past performance is not indicative of future uh, results. Uh, so yeah, looking at stocks first, uh, as we mentioned during the intro, we're going to be having three major corporations reporting their figures next week, uh, which are also listed on Tixi. Uh, now, these companies are going to be Walmart, Home Depot and Cisco. Uh, and you can pretty much see them uh, if I just scroll towards, I'll set it to next week. Uh, this is the earnings calendar that I like using and I keep mentioning uh, pretty much on every single Outlook. Of course, you don't have to use the same one, uh, but one of the main reasons as to why I like it is due to the simplistic form. Uh, you get the little filters that you can use uh, at the very top here and you have a little box giving you like sort of an indication towards the number of stocks uh, that are going to be uh, having uh, the earnings released. Uh, so yeah, we're setting this one to next week, as you can see highlighted by this box. And we can see for next week, we're going to be having 2,379 stocks reporting uh, the numbers. Uh, and as you can see here, this is where you can see Walmart, Home Depot, uh, and Cisco as well. Uh, and a very easy way to check whether they're on Tixi, you can just go to Tixi's homepage and then navigate to the stock section. Uh, and here you're going to pretty much get a list of all the uh, stock stocks that are listed on Tixi's platform. You can just hit Control F or Command F if you're on Mac and just type in the ticker. Uh, so for Cisco, we can see it right there. Then we mentioned Home Depot. Uh, you can also see it there. And then lastly, we said Walmart. So you can also see that one there as well. Uh, now, Going back to the earnings calendar, as you can see the dates, uh, so Walmart and Home Depot, they're both going to be on the same day, which is going to be the 16th of August. And then we have Cisco releasing the numbers uh, the day after on the 17th. Uh, now, aside from the day, uh, the other piece of information that's important to cover is obviously the timing of the release in the sense that whether it's going to be in the pre-market hours or after the market close. Now, uh, looking at Walmart and a Home Depot, uh, they're both going to be releasing the figures. It's going to be in the uh, pre-market hours of the 16th. Uh, so you can expect to see the impact of the earnings report on the very same day uh, during the regular trading hours. Uh, and then Cisco, which is on the 17th, they're going to be releasing the reports uh, after the market close. So you can expect to see the impact on the stock uh, on the very next day, which is going to be on the 18th. And that's where you're likely going to start seeing either a gap up or a gap down uh, in prices, depending on the outcome uh, of the report. Uh, now, as I said during the intros, things are uh, starting to slow down a little bit. As you can see, uh, this past week we had more than 5,000 stocks uh, reporting the, the, the earnings report for Q2. Uh, and as we said, for next week it's going to be uh, less and it's going to be 2,379. However, by no means does this mean that, for example, the earnings report of the companies we mentioned previously, uh, they're going to be any less significant than the ones that they mentioned last uh, week. Uh, it's just a little bit of a decrease in numbers as we slowly and slowly uh, draw to a close for the Q2 uh, earnings season. But of course, there's still quite a number of stocks we're going to be releasing uh, the figures as well. So definitely uh, stay tuned. Uh, now, on the Forex front, uh, we said during the intro that it is also going to be uh, yet another busy week. 
and you can obviously find the economic uh, calendar from TIGSI's website. If I just go back to the home page and you can navigate to the education and research tab and then you can click on the economic calendar. Uh, and just like with the earnings calendar as well, you can just use these filters at the top to readjust the data. Uh, so we'll set it for next week and switch it to medium high impact events. And obviously always keep a note of the time of the uh, time zone here because it's going to directly uh, affect the uh, the timing of the event that you see on the left hand side here. And obviously you want to be looking at the correct um, at the correct times. Uh, as we said, we're going to be having a lot of inflation data reports, which is going to be from the EU. Uh, we're going to get some from uh, Japan as well. And also we're going to have employment data from the UK. But most importantly, let's not forget the FOMC meeting minutes taking place on Wednesday. Uh, but just to cover some of the other events. Uh, so we're looking at Monday, uh, starting the day and the week off with the first high impact event, which is going to be GDP data uh, from Japan, which is then going to be followed by industrial production figures from China at 3 a.m. Uh, then scrolling further down. We're basically moving on to Tuesday. Uh, we're going to be having the RBA meeting minutes. So this is for the uh, reserve from the Reserve Bank of Australia. Uh, always make note of this little tool tip as it's, it's a good indication as to the kind of volatility you can expect in the hours uh, following the event. Uh, and we basically come to the first event that we mentioned in the intro, which is the unemployment figures uh, from the UK. As you can see, it's quite a number of events uh, here as well. And you can also see the volatility is pretty much uh, more than double than the volatility you'd get from the RBA meeting minutes as an example. Uh, so yeah, we have these events uh, from the UK. Uh, they're then going to be followed by economic sentiment figures, both from Germany as well as the Eurozone as a whole. Uh, we're going to get also trade balance figures uh, from the Eurozone. And then towards at lunchtime, we're going to be having housing data from the US and then uh, yet another inflation report, but this time uh, from Canada. And yeah, that pretty much wraps up Tuesday and then on to Wednesday. One more trade balance report, this time uh, from Japan, which is then going to be followed by the interest rate decision from the uh, Reserve Bank of New Zealand, where they are expected to hike rates by 50 uh, basis points. So definitely yet another um, event to be keeping an eye for. Uh, and then, as we said, inflation data again coming from the UK. Let's not forget the kind of impact that the inflation report from the US had uh, last week. Uh, and it also affected a wide range of markets. Uh, so obviously we could see something similar, not just with the UK's inflation report, but the other ones that we mentioned previously um, as well. Uh, then in the regular EU session still, we're going to have employment figures from the Eurozone in general. And at lunchtime, we're going to have retail sales figures uh, from the US. And then again, we're still on Wednesday. And we're coming towards uh, the very end of the day and that's when we're going to get the FOMC meeting minutes uh, from the US as we mentioned, which is going to be quite crucial as we're going to get further hints as to uh, the, the future rate hike cycle uh, from the US. Uh, and then moving on to Thursday, uh, in the early morning hours we have unemployment figures uh, from Australia. Uh, it's going to be three consecutive uh, events that are going to be released more or less at the same time. Uh, and then towards the regular EU session, we're going to have inflation data uh, from the Eurozone. And then in the early afternoon hours, we're going to have existing home sales figures uh, from the US. And lastly, coming towards Friday. Uh, so in the morning hours, we're going to have inflation figures uh, from Japan, as we mentioned during the intro as well, as well as consumer confidence figures from the UK. Uh, which is uh, strangely going to be released basically in the early morning hours, just like the inflation figures from Japan. But then later on during the regular UK slash EU session, that's where we're going to have uh, retail sales figures from the UK, which is pretty much the last high impact event, and which also marks uh, the end of the week with regards to events for uh, for the uh, Forex markets. Of course, we do have a few more. It's up to you whether you want to pay attention to those. Uh, but again, this is essentially the last high impact according to Tix's economic calendar. Uh, but since we're on the topic of the economic calendar itself, let's not forget uh, to highlight the oil inventory report, which is going to be released on the usual on Wednesday. Uh, now, in terms of oil and gold 
I wouldn't say for oil at least that the oil inventory report is the only one that you want to be uh, keeping an eye on. The reason being because obviously, as we said, later on towards the uh, the evening, we're going to have the FOMC meeting minutes from the US. Uh, so any impact that we're probably going to see uh, in terms of the US dollar is going to translate onto any other assets that are direct that are pegged to the dollar itself. Uh, so commodities like uh, oil and gold are most probably going to be affected. Uh, we also saw this type of scenario last week with the inflation report uh, when it was released oil and gold both rose uh, as dollar prices fell and they also fell uh, in general over the week and we saw both commodities rising in prices uh, as well and lastly there's also uh, covering cryptos and bitcoin specifically um, so let's just look at the charts so we had our areas marked down as you can see there's not really much going on in the at least uh, on Bitcoin, from what we can see from Bitcoin's chart. Uh, again, prices are still slowly crawling their way uh, back up into these levels right here. Um, so again, for me, as we mentioned, I think I mentioned it also in last week's outlook as well, is that I would want to see prices come back into this area uh, before I start seeing, uh, before I start considering any type of opportunities. Of course, we can get moved sooner uh, before prices reaches uh, this area because if we look at the chart, we can also see there was a pretty strong rejection right off of that level right there. Uh, so I would say essentially when prices reach, I would, I would just mark a zone right here. Um, so depending on the kind of behavior behavior we get, that's when I'm going to start assessing as to how I want to uh, to position myself in the market. Uh, and yeah, there you have it. This is for us the outlook uh, for next week's markets. I hope you enjoyed the video and you find it useful. And I'll catch you in the next one. Until then, trade safe.